2026 Commonwealth Games has been awarded to Victoria. Well done. It'll cost a substantial amount, but I don't see it as a cost. I see it as a profound investment. How are you? I am a nation-building Prime Minister, believe me. And this is a nation-building project. Metro West is the next rail link for this great city. Australia's mega projects don't add up. The future of the 2026 Commonwealth Games is under a cloud tonight. After over the two decades, overruns on our biggest builds have cost taxpayers an unplanned $34 billion. The blowout is so predictable around the globe that Oxford University's Bent Flubia describes the phenomenon as the iron law of mega projects. Over budget, over time, under benefits, over and over. Mega projects are often conceived hurriedly, shortly before an election, like Melbourne's suburban rail loop. Originally costed at $50 billion, final price, at least double that. They're not well scoped out, often the alignment isn't known, so they're really just made on the hoof. Mega projects like Sydney's Metro West Railway are a vast, growing sector of the economy. Around Australia, 32 transport projects, each worth at least half a billion dollars, have been funded since 2016. Only eight, so only a quarter of them, had a business case either published or assessed by a relevant infrastructure authority. So three quarters of them were committed without the, the politician or decision maker understanding what it was that they were actually committing to at the time that they made the, the decision to invest. The sheer number of concurrent projects is causing more delays and that leads to bigger bills. Right now I would say that governments in effect have promised projects that are simply beyond the capacity of the economy to deliver. Infrastructure Australia estimates that the majority of projects could now take 50% longer than planned. These are big dreams in these mountains. Malcolm Turnbull's expanded Snowy Mountains power scheme was supposed to cost $4.5 billion and be finished by 2025. The latest estimate is $10 billion, completed, maybe, by 2028. Hey everyone. Some of these projects have pretty line ball sort of benefit cost ratios and of course if the cost ends up being 150%, 200% of the original figure, then that really does blow out the overall equation. Bent Flubia says the biggest projects are usually cursed by misplaced optimism. The main problem is that we don't think these projects through. If you're optimistic about the budget, you're going to run out of money. And that's what happens typically for the vast majority of projects. The cost of two major recent projects blew out by billions over complexities unearthed during construction. For Sydney's light rail, the problem was the underground power lines. In Melbourne's Westgate Tunnel, it was contaminated soil. Not enough work is done because these projects are really rushed to market. And, and that is where we get a lot of these delays and disputes and, and additional costs. But the overrun of those urban projects will be dwarfed by the final bill for the inland rail freight line linking Melbourne and Brisbane, first priced in 2015 at $9.9 billion. An independent review found a board that did not have adequate skills and a rail line commissioned without knowing where it will start or finish. The latest cost estimate, $31.4 billion. This project was always line ball. It's been very, it's been riddled with risk all the way along. And uh, now um, I think there's a, there's a very difficult decision for the federal government to make about it. This is the opportunity not to just cut and run, but to actually look at it and get it right. Uh, I think we need to have these visionary projects that opens up a corridor of commerce uh, from Melbourne to Brisbane, I think potentially to Gladstone, uh, that gives us options to get our product around the world quicker and efficiently. Work is well underway on Metro West, an underground train line from Sydney's western suburbs to the CBD. I think it would be better for Parramatta overall if people could get to and from the city a lot easier. I feel like it would pull a lot more stuff out here. Gareth Flanagan, 
owner of Western Sydney Music Academy, says in the short term it's put extra pressure on his business. There was access to the car park in there as well, but that car park's since been demolished, uh, I think, for both the Metro and to make way for the Powerhouse Museum as well. It does have an impact when people realise that parking is an issue, especially a lot of the families. There's a lot less families coming in now. The $16 billion project was commissioned before a business case was prepared. And now the real cost of at least $25 billion has become apparent. The New South Wales government is considering scrapping it. If we make a decision to axe the project, then you can take my head off then. But in the meantime, let's let this review do its job and report back to government. It's a bit of a disaster, isn't it? <laughs> all, all that disruption and all them impact on local businesses for essentially nothing. Announcing a project is easy. Pulling out is hard. Most politicians can't do that. They're afraid that they will be viewed as, uh, you know, incompetent, that they spend all this money and then they don't have anything to show for it. After promising a more expensive regional Commonwealth Games, Dan Andrews got bill shock and pulled the pin. I think it is always better at that point uh, when you're in a hole to stop digging and, and I think that is what the government's done. An alternative to abandoning a mega project that's underway is using the past to help work out how much future projects will really cost. So we don't go back and say uh, we thought it would cost this and we thought the benefits would be like this, how did that turn out for us? So, so we've, we are destined to repeat history really because we, we never learn these lessons. Mm -hmm.